on Garage Time, we're going to show you how to tear down your 1500cc Volkswagen Type 1 engine. So the reason we're tearing down our engine today is we had a vacuum leak on our manifold here. Um, it is a semi-automatic that we're ripping apart. Vacuum is very important on the semi-automatic, so we are replacing our manifold. Uh, we had often lots of leaks with our push rods, and I have a new generator, and well, new generator, new alternator. We're replacing the generator, and to do that on the Volkswagen, you actually have to put a new stand. So here's our replacement stand. So let's get over there and start taking it apart. Okay, so I'm going to start with removing the fan belt. You can see I have a, a nifty tool here. A lot of times people just ram a screwdriver in there, which it, uh, well, you can damage your alternator or generator and you end up bending and whatnot. So yeah, fancy little wrench. Uh, I find it quite handy, especially with working on Volkswagen engines quite a bit. And you obviously see this is the generator. So we will be removing this generator and putting an alternator. So typically I would want to be concerned about my spacers and keep them the same, but I'm starting from scratch, so I'm not too concerned. Put things back. Now I'm going to remove my generator strap. The way I'm working at this is I'm going to be removing the big fan shroud at the back. I need to do that to get the generator and fan assembly off to replace that. And as I mentioned, my manifold, you can see here the aluminum tape. That's, that's where I was leaking. I had a vacuum leak and as I mentioned, Vacuum is critical on the semi-auto, so we're going to replace that with our new one, which it doesn't have a leak. And you can see there, my generator is now free. So I don't know if Sean wants to move to the side over here, but I'm going to um, remove uh, the tin screws. Now, something that I always do is, well that one was really loose, is I don't like slot screws. So these will not be going back in. When we replace replace them, we will be putting a, a 10 millimeter bolt head on those so that uh, we don't have issues. Because sometimes, that's a good one, sometimes I find these are, are very tight. But if I uh, put my screwdriver on, and use pliers the way I did there. It helps helps break free, you have more torque, gets it going. But again, slots in my eyes not the right not the right hardware for the job. So we have these three on this side and obviously the one is for the fan housing. This is for my cylinder covers, but I will be taking the cylinders off because we are replacing the push rods as well. Fan house assembly is off or off, is loose. And now um, it's ready to lift out, but as you can see, I don't want to damage anything on my newly rebuilt carburetor. So I'm taking the carb off next, and once the carb is off, that screw was already loose, I don't know why, but it was. Then I will not damage it. So I got a few fuse hole, fuel holes connected. I 
was interesting. Okay, so the carburetor is off and free. I always put the nuts back on, just loosely, but so I, I don't lose any of my hardware. We can fuel. Okay, so let me just double check, but my fan house assembly, I disconnected my coil. And the only other concern, which I didn't think was going to be a concern on this, the thermostat, usually there's a rod down to your flaps, uh, you might have to disconnect this engine didn't have them installed, so not a problem. So the fan house assembly is off. Uh, now we can remove the generator stand, because we have to replace it with an alternator stand. Uh, I'll do the front nuts first, but actually since I'm removing the manifold anyway, uh, the single port manifold on this, this 1500cc engine. I will uh, remove it because the rear nuts are easier to access when it's off. Now, I didn't really go into it, but typically working on one of these engines, it's a 13 millimeter wrench or a 10 millimeter wrench, so those were 13, and now that I'm going to remove the single port manifold, these are 10 millimeter nuts. Now before I lift that off, you can see there's a bunch of crud on there. We're going to turn off the camera while I, uh, I'm going to turn on my air compressor. Blow some compressed air on there to uh, clean off that mess so it doesn't fall inside. Even though I am pulling off the head, we'll keep the crud out. The uh, reason we're turning off the camera, the compressor is crazy loud. So uh, we'll do that in a sec and I'll loosen the other side. All right, so we had the air compressor running. We blew this off. It's a little cleaner now, so these work their way up. And some crud fell, so that will pull out. So I'll go loosen the, pull the other side up, and then that assembly should just lift right off. And there we go, old leaky manifold has been removed. So now I will remove the last two 13 mils on this generator stand. And I'll obviously I'll have to replace the oil fill, take it off this stand and put it on my other stand. There we go. So next step, now that we're here, we're going to remove the cylinder tins. And I'm actually being pleasantly surprised. A lot of these screws are loose. Like they're not uh, giving me a fight. A lot of the time they, you really struggle with these. I usually end up with a couple bloody knuckles. But it's going all right. So the reason obviously we're removing the cylinder tin is so we can uh, loosen the heads, pull the heads back. Um, I'll pull the heads right off because this engine is new to me and 
we want to check out check out the status. Now we did have it running. But, um, yeah, since we have it out and we're taking it apart, we might as well inspect and uh, make sure everything's good. There you go. Slender tin removed. We'll do the same on the other side. So both cylinder tins have been removed. So now we're going to open the valve cover. Take off our valve cover. That was one of the knuckles I was talking about. And uh, we have to remove our rocker arm assembly so we can get to your eight head bolts. So we'll go ahead and move our rocker arm. Now you want to make sure when we remove the rocker arm that our push rods, so I'm going to get a cardboard box, I'm going to label it. And you make sure they go back in the same ones. If you're not replacing with new, you, all, you want to make sure they go back where they came out. So I'll get a cardboard box, I will poke some holes in it, and I'll mark flywheel side and one, two, three, four, and I will poke them in. And that way I can make sure I put them back exactly where they came out. So the rocker assembly is free, so I'm going to take it off. Set it down, and like I mentioned, so I always make sure too that you don't want to change the direction, right? So I, I pull it straight out, come to my box that I made, yes it makes, there's oil in them, and put it in. So then when I put them back, I make sure that obviously I'll lift it straight out, push it in. There you go, that's the four for that side. So I'll push the cart out of the way, clean a bit of that oil off my hand. So now all we have to do is loosen our eight head bolts. I uh, don't just do one at a time, it's not as critical when loosening, but when you tighten, obviously there's a sequence, usually it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, something like that, but you uh, check your book, check your manual, but I'm pretty sure it, it's like the X pattern, do each one a little bit, and go from there, but we're just loosening, and this is where you get a little bit of Volkswagen anxiety because you don't want your case bolts, you know, sometimes they come out, sometimes they strip. You've heard of people using case savers and whatnot. You know, you have a steel threaded rod going into an aluminum or magnesium block and yeah, it causes problems sometimes. But if we're lucky, all these will just loosen. We'll pull the head back a bit and be able to replace all of our push rod tubes. That was the main place this engine was leaking from. That's, that's why we're going to this extent when we're pulling it apart. So far, so good. And here we go. So this one. coming out now I'm going to see if I can grab that with like a vice 
<coughs> so it doesn't come right out. Uh, I'd rather it stay in. So I will put the Depending on how yeah, these aren't gonna squeeze in there very good. No. So let's try channel locks maybe. You know and yeah. Alright, so I am removing that because you know I don't want to damage my cylinder either. So when we put it back in, obviously this one will go in the same spot. It's the only one that's come loose. And we'll just torque it to spec. Or if I want, once I have it out, I could use heat on my vise and remove, remove the nut. More than likely I'll do option two. Okay, so that, yeah, that will come right out. Now that's not the worst problem, though it's worse when you're putting it in and you go torquing and as you're torquing it just pulls right out. That's when you get into the case savers uh, where you thread metal into the aluminum and then you, you screw into that. So now our head should be uh, loose. And what's holding it is one piece of tin I didn't loosen on the bottom. Uh, between the heater box and so once these two screws are loosened. The heater box will not hold it on, and our head will come right up. <laughs> there it is. Now I'm silent, I'm inspecting, but uh, I don't see any cracking or anything major. All right. So there you go. Repeat that on the other side and uh, your engine is Door down. And that's how you turn on your 1500cc Volkswagen Type 1 engine. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next time.